So now we're going to talk a little bit about syphilis. And syphilis is a spirochet. Okay. Um, and it's the species Treponema pallidum. Okay. And the only way you can actually visualize this micro, this uh, bacteria, is by dark field microscopy. Um, and then next we're going to talk a little bit about primary, secondary, tertiary, and congenital syphilis. And primary syphilis is pretty much just a painless, painless, very high yield, <coughs> chanker. Okay. Uh, most of the time you see it on the shaft of the penis. Um, so there's the penis and there's the chanker. Uh, very important that it is painless, and that is primary syphilis. So in secondary syphilis, you get that uh, spirochet that's in the painless chanker, and that disseminates throughout the body. So you get this uh, maculopapular rash, maculopapular rash, um, as well as condylomatolata, condylomatolata. And what that is, just uh, painless um, mucosal warty erosions um, that you see all over the body. Um, again, they're painless, um, just like the chanker. And again, you'd be able to, if you were to biopsy these um, condylomatolata, you'd be able to see the spirochet under dark field microscopy. Um, and just keep in mind that secondary syphilis is systemic. Now, tertiary syphilis consists of gummas all over, um, which are basically granulomatous reactions. Um, you get aortitis, okay? And you get aortitis because you get inflammation of the vasa vesorum, which is, if that's the aorta, it's the smaller blood vessels feeding the rest of the aorta. So if you knock these out, you get aortitis because you can't feed the inner layers of the aorta, so you get an inflammation reaction, okay? And then one of the last things you see is argyll robinson pupil, okay? argyll robinson pupil, um, which is said to accommodate but does not react. And that's huge because there is no other way to describe uh, argyll robinson pupil besides accommodate but not react. Um, another name for this is also prostitute pupil. Um, it's just a funny way to say accommodates. Uh, a prostitute accommodates but does not react. And you can test for tertiary syphilis um, two ways. So you have venereal disease research laboratory test or RPR. Okay, so those are two ways uh, to initially test for it. And you confirm it with fluorescent trepomonal antibody antibodies. Okay, um, so, you, so you screen with these and then you confirm with this. Um, and then once you find out, you treat it with penicillin G. Pen G. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so gummas, granulomatous reaction, aerotitis because of destruction of the vase of azorum. Um, you get argyll robinson pupil. Um, I really know how to draw that. Uh, screen for, with a VDRL and RPR and FTA ABS to confirm and treat with penicillin G. So in congenital syphilis is where a mother who has syphilis gives birth to a child. Um, you have a couple of things that are very pathognomonic. Um, the first thing you get is a saddle nose. Okay. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like that. So this is the person's nose, and that's their face. So notice that it kind of looks like a saddle up here, um, and that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing you see is Hutchinson's triad. Hutchinson's. Uh, we'll do a little triforce thing. Hutchinson triad. Um, and that consists of three things. So first you see Hutchinson's teeth, um, which are centrally notched, widely spaced upper central incisors. I know that was kind of a mouthful. Um, but it's basically sharp-looking incisors, um, widely spaced. Um, and then another part of the triad is interstitial keratitis, uh, which you ha which, which you have uh, inflammation of the cornea, which you get corneal scarring and progressive blindness. Um, and the next thing you see is deafness. Uh, along with, all right, so you see blindness and I'm trying to draw an ear here, and deafness, and that's because you have inflammation of cranial nerve eight. Um, and then one of the last things you see um, is saber shin, or it's where you're growing, but then the tibia ends up looking like this, kind of like a saber. Um, and you get this from another type of, of uh, trepomonas pallidum called yaws. You also get this from Paget's disease of bone and also vitamin D deficiency. Um, so you also get saber shins, that's what they call them. Um, and then one of the last things you get is mulberry molars, uh, which is poorly developed cusps 
on the six of your molars. Um, so if your molar kind of looks like this, you have these little cusps on it, right? And they kind of stick up and, well, it looks like a molar. And what happens is you don't get these. You get uh, poorly developed, so you kind of have little craters instead. Um, so let's say you look at your tooth and it's kind of like this. Um, instead, your tooth kind of looks like that. And what should be is a little cusp right there. Um, so that's what you see in congenital syphilis. One of the biggest things is saddle nose. Um, and then if you also get blindness, deafness, and um, odd teeth, I don't really know how they'll describe it besides um, widely spaced incisors, um, then you're thinking congenital syphilis. Also, if you have poorly developed cusps or saber shin on x-ray, um, so if you see saber shin, you're thinking yaws, vitamin D deficiency, or Paget disease, disease of bone, but you're also thinking syphilis if you see any one of these other signs.